Okay, now you've shown the business and someone has some objections. They have some questions they need answered. And almost everyone that looks at this business, as we said, ends up saying maybe. What maybe means is I, I have some concerns or I need more information. There's four main objections you hear over and over in this business. Almost everybody that ever has an objection to getting started, it's one of two things. Either I don't have the time or I don't have the money. Now, I frequently remember somebody that told me years ago said, if you don't have time and money to start this business, they always ask them, do you have a television set? If so, sell it. Now you have both time and money because we all spend way too much time watching television. But what I hear all the time is, I don't have the money. And my answer to I don't have the money is, great. I thought we had a problem. So what I'm hearing you say is the only reason you're not ready to get started right now is you don't have the $429 it takes to get started. Is that right? And they say, yeah, that's it. I say, great. Then we don't have any problem. And they're looking at me like I'm from outer space at that point. But I say, well, let's get started right now. We'll figure it out. Uh, who is the first person that came to mind when you thought about this business? Let's make a list of some people that might be good at this. You and I will get started doing it together, and we'll come up with the money along the way. Now, the reason I do that is, just like Brian taught you, I want the man to start giving me a list of people to work with. I want him to engage in the business. We're not trying to sell him, but we want someone to engage in it. And once he starts building that list, he's engaged. Now, I'm not going to call their prospects for him. I'm going to have them call them. I'm going to help them with that. But once they start making a list, they have said yes. And the truth on the answer, I don't have the money, in 90% of the times, what they really mean is I can't see myself allocating $429 to this yet because I'm not quite that confident yet. And the only way to overcome that confidence question is to show them that you're going to help them and they can be successful. So anytime somebody says, I don't have the money, congratulations, you just found a new consultant. They're ready to get started. The key there, though, is I empathize with them and I point out to them that I saw very clearly what you told me is that you don't have the 429 to get started. Because you want to clarify that, because sometimes you'll say, is what you're telling me you don't have 429? They'll say, well, no, I mean, I, I got money. I just don't think I have time. And you find out that it wasn't really money. That wasn't the objection. You say, oh, you don't have the time. Well, that's perfect, because I'm not asking for much of your time. I work this business full time, or I work this business however many hours a week you work it, and I'm not asking you to put much time. I'm just asking you to sit down for the next few minutes with me and let's make a list of some people that you think might be pretty good at this and I'll do most of the work. And with me doing most of the work when we first get started, you don't have to put much time into it until you're already making significant income. So who's the first person you thought of when we started looking at this business? And I go back to making the list because the same answer there is, oh, if you don't have the time for this, you're perfect for it. The most successful people I know in Ambit Energy are extremely busy. If somebody tells you they have a lot of time on their hands, that's usually because they're broke, right? We go back to the money question on those folks. Busy people usually are best at finding a little bit of time. So don't accept time as a no. Show them and mean it that you'll put your time into it to compensate for it to help them get started. And it's amazing after you help somebody get started by putting a few hours yourself in and they get that envelope with a, that yellow envelope with a check in it, suddenly they have time to build a business. And then some people are just outright honest about it. They're what I call green people, accountants, engineers, people that just want some information. And they'll just tell you, it all sounds good, but I need more information. And I say, great. Let me get you on the phone with somebody that can answer any of your questions, because that is an outright call for a three-way call to an expert. And I have also personally seen times when somebody says, well, I want to read all the material first. That means a lot to me. I don't argue with them. I give them my book. I haven't read it, but I'd appreciate it if they would. <laughs> and, and they're not going to join until they read that. So sometimes it's about you supplying the information. But need more information means it's time for the three-way call to the expert. And then a big one. Now, this one is not an objection. It's a pause button. And, they, and you hear it frequently. If you invite people to a presentation, particularly if it's a live presentation, try and get both the husband and wife to come. You have a much higher percentage of them getting started in there. I've had so many times when one spouse comes and not the other, and then that poor spouse gets excited, the one that came, and they go home, and they throw this information up all over their other spouse who doesn't understand any of it. But it's a common objection because they came by themselves, and they said, well, it looks good. I'm ready to get started, Steve, but I need to talk to my spouse. And I say, you know what? I completely agree because this is a family business. 
Now she doesn't or he doesn't have to do it with you, but you need their support to be successful. But let me ask you, did you understand everything you saw when you saw the presentation? Well, maybe not everything. You say, great, why don't you let me answer her questions or his questions and give them a fair chance? Why don't we meet tomorrow night for supper? I'll uh, come by and pick y'all up about 6.30 and let's go have dinner together and make sure we get all her questions answered. I resort to the meal. I tell you what, you can, you can have lunch or dinner with someone and just coming together to break bread, just coming together over a meal will put you in the right atmosphere. But the key to that is if someone says they have to talk to their spouse, uh, I don't agree with telling them to join anyway. I tell them, yes, but let me do the talking and set another appointment for you to go show it to the spouse. Or at least, at the very least, make sure you tell them, don't try and explain this to your spouse. Here's the DVD. Go home and let her watch that and then please put her on the phone with me and let me answer the questions. Or if I'm doing all this over the phone and I'm in Texas and they're in New York, I say, show her the Energy 526 site, show her the presentation online, and then put her on the phone with me. Fair enough. And that's what makes it happen the most. 